we're going to talk about sex determination and how that plays into the inheritance of certain characteristics or traits. So when we look at the genotype of both females and males, let's look at the female first. Her genotype um, is sex chromosome X and X. Now the possible gametes that she can make are going to include eggs that have an X or eggs that have an X. Remember that process is called meiosis. The male genotype is X and sex chromosome Y. So that means males can produce gametes that are both X or Y. So what we need to remember is that the egg is always X. And if the sperm is X, that means the baby is going to be a girl. And if the sperm is Y, the baby is going to be a boy. So that means if the sperm is the gamete that is variable, that means it is the dad that determines the sex of the baby. Now, when we look at the Punnett square, when we actually do this, we find that there is a 50-50 chance of having a boy versus a girl. Now, we've studied that already when we did our 50-50 lab when we flipped the coins. We already know that. I just did the Punnett square to show it to you. Now, if you think back to the karyotypes that you completed, all of the chromosomes matched up in homologous pairs except the sex chromosomes in males. What if the gene for a certain trait was actually located on the X chromosome? Think about it. Females have two X chromosomes. That means they inherit two alleles for the trait. But if males only have one X chromosome, then they only have one allele for the trait. Think about it. What impact is that going to have on the inheritance of a trait for boys? If they only get one X chromosome, they're only going to inherit one allele. If they get dominant, they're going to have the dominant trait. If they receive a recessive allele, they're going to have the recessive trait. Now, this leads us to what is known as sex-linked traits. These are traits whose alleles are located on the X chromosome and are recessive. For example, the ability to see color, or what we know as color blindness, is a recessive trait that's found on the X chromosome. The ability to, of, of blood to clot properly is known as hemophilia. That is also a sex-linked recessive trait. Now, Let's say we're going to study hemophilia, so we're going to use an H because that makes it really easy to see um, for our first couple of examples. Let's say we were going to cross a hemophiliac, <coughs> excuse me, a hemophiliac female. That means she has, has inherited both the, of the homozygous recessive alleles on her X chromosomes with a male that is completely normal. That means he inherited the dominant allele. When I do that cross, I get this as a result, this as a result, that, and that. Now I want you to tell me, what do each of those actually mean? Okay, so this first one right here, this is going to be a boy or a girl? Hopefully you said a girl. Now. Look at the combination of the H's. It still works exactly the same way. If it's heterozygous right there, that means that this female is going to be what? Normal or hemophiliac? Hopefully you said normal. How about the next female right next door? Right here. Normal again. What about this boy? Oh, he's got the recessive allele, so that means he has hemophilia. How about this one? Mm-hmm. So when we start looking um, at the phenotypic ratio, I could ask you a question like, what percentage of the offspring are going to inherit hemophilia from their mother? That answer would be 50%. But if I asked you how many of the girls are going to inherit hemophilia, you'd say 0% because 
in the Punnett square, both of the female offspring have inherited the dominant allele, so that means they are not going to have hemophilia. But what if I ask you about the boys? Hmm, that is 100%. Interesting. So let's look at another cross. Let's look at a normal female who is heterozygous. She has one dominant and one recessive allele. Let's look at a dad who has hemophilia. So now he's inherited the recessive allele. So now when I do that cross, I get that one and that one and that one and that one. Hmm. Now let's look at the results. <coughs> How many of the offspring could potentially get hemophilia? Hopefully you said two out of four. 50%. How many of the females could get hemophilia? Well, hopefully you said 50% again, because out of the females, two females, one out of the two could get hemophilia. This female right here. How about the boys? How many boys could get hemophilia? 50% again, because of that boy right there. Now what's interesting is hopefully you're seeing a pattern. When I look back at this first Punnett square, where do these boys get their hemophilia from? Do they get their hemophilia from their dad or from their mom? Hmm, in this case, they get it from the mom because the mom has the recessive allele on her X chromosome. Because the male inherits the Y from his dad, right? It comes from over here to here that X came from mom. Let's look at the example over here. Where did this female get her hemophilia from? Oh, look at that, both mom and dad. What about this girl? I'm sorry, this boy. This boy got it from his mom. Now, I will tell you, more often than not, boys that inherit a recessive trait are more like, well, are going to get it from their mother. Now think about it, why would that be? What would cause that? Hopefully, you're getting that it's from the mom. The boys always get their X chromosome from the mom. If girls get it, do they have to partially get it from their dad? Of course. But they also have to get it from their mom. Well, how can a mom be normal, but still have the recessive allele? That's where this situation occurs. And that's where, when we look at this mom right here, that's called something special. We call that carrier. You know me and my handwriting. I was going to do this at school today, but they did a scheduled shutdown of the server downtown, so I couldn't get on the smart board. So that's what we call that mom right there. She is a carrier. She's completely normal, except now she is she has that recessive gene and she pass it passes it on not only to her sons, but also to her daughters, who can then a become a carrier themselves, just like their mom, or if their dad has hemophilia, would inherit that sex linked disease.